Good morning and happy new year you sick twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another special edition of This Week in Weather. Uh, this particular video is going to focus exclusively on the January 3rd mid-Atlantic snowstorm. So let's get right to it. A lot to talk about here. Really I've been playing catch up all day. Um, snow clients have been calling in and, and you know it's been one thing after another. The, the data continues to show a bigger and bigger storm. So um, that's always a problem here. So if you're watching this video, video for the first time, remember, if you go to Weather Risk YouTube, um, you can see all the videos if you haven't seen them before. And eventually I'll get the problem solved with Facebook. I don't know what those assholes are doing. But in the meantime, I'll continue to post on the Twitter page. And if you are in the snow removal business, which some of you are, um, and I know you go to the Facebook page, please contact me as soon as you can. Um, weather risk at verizon.net wx risk at verizon.net so we can get additional snow removal information to you as soon as possible okay uh, i'm going to make a, a post about that on the a new blog and on the twitter page so you can follow there all right this here is the website if you haven't seen it yet remember down here at the bottom there's a newsletter there will be a new edition of the newsletter Sunday night. You can get uh, so it'll be sent out to people and put on the website. So you can look at it on the website, of course, as always. And then, of course, don't forget our different subscriptions for our snow removal forecast services right here under my subscriptions. OK, so let's take a look what's going on. Now, if you remember a few days ago last week when we did the video last Wednesday or Thursday, we talked about this strong piece of energy in the southern jet stream. And, that, and the uh, whether or not it was going to become a big deal or whether it was just going to fly off the coast. Well, the thing is, the original piece of energy was at the trough that was in California. You remember when we had all the big snows and the storms and the rain on the West Coast and the Rockies? There was a piece of energy at the second piece of energy at the base of the trough. And that's what this is right now. So this piece of energy that you're seeing here on this particular slide uh, that is the energy, and you can see this is Sunday night. Now, notice the black line here. You see how it's aligned in a due north to south orientation? This is exactly what you want to see for a big mid-Atlantic snowstorm. It's exactly neutrally tilted. It's running from north to south like that. That's a neutral tilt. And the other thing is, notice that the northern jet stream, you see these lines coming down across Minnesota, the Great Lakes, you see how these lines are coming in? They don't phase. You don't get the two lines merging. These are two separate systems. This is why it is a mid-Atlantic snowstorm and not a northeast snowstorm or a New England snowstorm. So that's the one thing to keep in mind here with this. Okay, so that's what the GFS is showing right now. And it's very, very, now it's very aggressive with the system here, and it has been for a while. Uh, it's taken a while for the other models to catch up, but as you'll see, they all have caught up here with this. Now, here's the system now for early uh, Monday morning, 1 a.m., and you can see it has a distinct negative tilt right here. Uh, running, it's the running, you know, the axis is running in a northwest to southeast orientation. Very strong piece of energy, a lot of vorticity here. This is a real shit kicker, this storm. And then it moves off the Virginia Maryland coast. <clears throat> and as you can see, it slides off the coast to the west to east. Now, the GFS is a little further north than the other models here. You'll see this in a second. Here is the European. So if we go back here, now this is again for Monday morning at 1 a.m. So if we go back to this, you see where the short wave is here in Georgia and Alabama, Tennessee. And then if we go to the European, it's a little further south. You see that? And there's the negative tilt. You see the black line running in a northwest to southeast orientation. Now look at the lines coming down from Lake Manitoba from Canada. You see how they come across the Great Lakes in New England, but they don't come into the system. They don't phase, which is why the system comes moves off the North Carolina coast. And there it is. And again, look where the system is, almost over Norfolk or the Salisbury. And if we go back to the GFS, it's further north. So there's a little bit of a difference between the two models here. And that little bit difference is a big deal. Now, this is the NAM model here. So I posted this earlier on the Twitter page. On the image on the left, this is the NAM, the three kilometer NAM from um, Saturday morning. Total snowfall by Monday, 5 p.m. And you can see most areas an inch of snow or less. And even this, remember, we're going to have a wet ground and warm temperatures. So even there, the places are getting a couple of inches. It's, that's a 10 to 1 ratio, and we're not going to get a 10 to 1 ratio. But the new one here on the right, you can see this here, arrows. This is the new 0Z Sunday, 
uh, NAM, and you can see it's got huge snows from Richmond up to just south of DC across Patuxent River, Salisbury, Georgetown, Cambridge, Easton, Charlottesville, Ashland, down towards Lynchburg, significant snow in Roanoke, uh, Lexington, uh, Staunton, uh, Culpeper, Warrington, uh, Farmville, all these places. Now, south of Petersburg, the, the, the much more sleet and, and rain mixed in, the snow amounts are kept lower. But again, this is at a 10 to 1 snow ratio. Are we going to see that? What is the impact of the wet ground, the super warm ground? All of these are factors which are going to suppress the snow total. Like I've said before many times, if this was a regular, ordinary winter pattern we were in, going into this event, we would be looking at a lot more snow. And a lot of places in Virginia and Maryland would get 6 to 12 inches of snow. Now, this is the NAM radar. Again, this is the 0 run of the NAM. And you can see this is valid as of Monday at 5 a.m. And now, in case you can't see it, there's Richmond. You see the pink? That's sleet, 5 a.m. To the north, it's got a lot of super, super heavy snow. In Georgetown, um, probably uh, right along just to the north of Salisbury, maybe Salisbury, Cambridge and Easton, Patuxent River is getting slammed. Um, uh, Fredericksburg, Culpeper, Warrington, Ashland, Charlottesville getting crushed with heavy snow down into uh, Lexington and Roanoke and Blacksburg and Farmville. And then just south of that, there's a bit of sleet and then you've got the warm air and the rain there. Notice that to the north, north of DC, it's actually a little bit of rain there because it's not coming down really heavy. So you don't have as much cold air. So the temperature is 34 degrees by Baltimore and it's more of a snow rain mix. It's not really coming down hard enough to accumulate. Now, this is later on. This is the uh, FV3, the high resolution experimental NAM model. Uh, you can see it goes absolutely crazy. This is Monday morning, 7 a.m., snowing like hell in Richmond, just to the north and west, snowing like hell in Baltimore and D.C., and in Dover and in Salisbury and Charlottesville and Farmville. You can see the big Roanoke, Lexington, Lynchburg is just coming down, even snow down by Greensboro, Winston, Salem, and, and Danville. You can see that. <coughs> And then south and east of Richmond, we have heavy rain and changing to sleet in Norfolk and in, you know, lower Virginia Eastern Shore and Franklin and, and, and maybe by Williamsburg is with a rain snow line right through there. So that's what it was showing. Then you can see here, this is Monday at 10 a.m. snowing like hell. Notice at this point it stopped in Roanoke. Now the NAM is moving this faster than the other models. So that's something to keep in mind here. And then notice that Norfolk has got kind of a dry slot here. You see, there's not much going on in Virginia Beach, so there's a problem with there. This is one of the situations where Hampton and Newport News and Suffolk and Smithfield could see a lot more snow than Chesapeake and Norfolk uh, and maybe Hampton on the water, Pocosin could see. So that's something to keep in mind as well, and that eastern North Carolina. Now, this is the uh, total snowfall from, uh, this is the HR, NAM, uh, HR model here, uh, the FV3. Now, this was... Um, valid. Uh, this came out. Uh, when did this one come out? This was the um, 12Z Saturday run. You can see it has almost no snow. A little bit of snow here in Hampton Roads. A half inch, inch and a half, a little bit of the mountains. Then if you look at the upgrade, look at the update. Holy crap. Look at the change from that to that. Wow. I mean, holy crap. And you look at the snow mounts. Huge snow totals relatively speaking for the change in the mountains of western north carolina look at that okay and then in southwest virginia you know six inches of roanoke before nothing uh four, four tenths of an inch in western southwest virginia now eight inches and then in, in richmond you got eight to ten inches here and then a five inches in, in dc uh, six eight inches it's between dc and richmond and charlottesville and, and, and lynchburg and Goochland and Tappahannock and the Middle Peninsula and Northern Neck and Patuxent River and St. Mary's and Salisbury and Georgetown and Cambridge and Easton. Notice that Hampton Roads gets a little bit of snow at the end here, but it's not nearly as much. And again, that's a 10 to 1 ratio. So the question is, what are the temperatures going to be? If the temperatures at the height of the storm are still 32 degrees, that's going to make it really marginal to get the snow to accumulate. So that's something else to keep in mind. Now, this is Again, this is the uh, eight, this is the uh, 
ratio this is the cashier ratio the difference here is this is a regular snow ratio 10 to 1 this here uses the cashier snow ratio the algorithm and it's almost the same map as you can see is not much difference here it's a little lighter in central virginia uh, but almost the same map now this here is the zero z gfs model and i highlighted this you can see this is the one from weathermodels.com the problem here is that the weather models, they amp their snow maps. They a lot of, get a lot of weather fanatics, a lot of snow nuts, really crazy, and they overdo their snow maps. Their algorithm looks at anything that's mixed precipitation and calls it all snow. And as a result, you can see it has a max of 18 inches here near Fredericksburg, you know, between Ashland and Fredericksburg. This is bullshit. This is not going to happen. I would like to forecast 12 inches of snow, 16 just north of Richmond. I'd love to do that. I can't do it. This is crap. This is not the accurate model at all. It's way overdoing it. You're not going to see 13 inches of snow in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry. That's not happening. It just isn't. Um, and, you know, this is purely the GFS. And if we look at the, uh, this is the Kashara ratio, the GFS is doing the same thing. The model goes crazy. 15 inches in Atlantic City? Are you kidding me? Come on, really? Okay, 15 in Charlottesville and Staunton. And, and you can see 15 in D.C. Give me a break. It's ridiculous. And if we look at the, uh, now this map here, this is the GFS. This is actual snow adjusted for compaction. This is snow depth. Look at the difference between this and this. So you have like eight inches in, in, in Fredericksburg as opposed to 16 or 18. Can you believe that? Look at in Salisbury and look on the Delmarva. I mean, that's a big snow for this time of year, 8, 10 inches. That's not nothing. 10 inches in southern New Jersey. Yeah, that's a real possibility. It's got 9 inches in D.C. Could be. But this is much more reasonable than this. So I'm just, you know, keep that in mind here. Now, this is the high-resolution European early Sunday morning model. It's gangbusters. Notice, again, on all these models, the other thing is, look at the sharp cutoff to the north here. Look how sharp the cutoff to the north is. Philadelphia gets 2 inches. Atlantic City gets 12. Okay, Hagerstown 4.6. DC 9.5. Even if you go crazy with this gigantic snow total on the GFS, again, look at the sharp cutoff between Atlantic City and Philly, between DC and Hagerstown. Again, this is an important point here. The very sharp cutoff. Now, the European is showing the same thing. Look at the European model here. Look at the sharp cutoff. Hagerstown, 1.2 inches. Baltimore, 4. D.C., 6.7. Hey, uh, Harrisonburg, 3.9. Charlottesville, almost 8. 6 inches in, in, in Richmond. You know, 7 inches in, in Fredericksburg. Um, you know, now, um, and you can see a Farmville got 7 inches. There's a gap in the snow shield in the Shenandoah Valley. And then you have the second area of snow in western North Carolina mountains into Hillsville, and Abington just to the west of Roanoke. So there's a gap here, right here in the Shenandoah Valley between the snow. And then in the Hampton Roads in Southeast Virginia, you do get some snow at the end when the cold air gets in here. Look at the big, huge snow band though in Southern and in Salisbury, Maryland. Dover, uh, not so much Dover, they're eight, nine inches, but Salisbury and Georgetown, they could be the big winners here because they still get the snow. The thing just wraps in there all day on Monday, just pounding down from this big flow, ocean flow. Now, this is the sounding from the European model, all right? And you can look at this. This is Richmond, and you can see the uh, temperature at 1 a.m. Excuse me. This is, um, yeah, this is 12Z on uh, Monday, and you can see the temperature is 33, 32. Uh, by the time you get to the afternoon hours, and this is Richmond again, look at the temperature. It's down to 29 degrees. If that's correct, it's going to stay snow almost the entire time in Richmond. So that's really significant. Now, if you look at the sounding here, look at the blue line. You see it's isothermal all the way down. It gets to 33 degrees, but really it's, it's cold enough for all snow, especially if it's coming down here. So that's all snow. That's all snow. Now, this is Norfolk. Okay, this is Hampton Roads. Now, their temperature here is 35, dew point 33. That means at the lowest level, they're above 32 degrees, and that might be a snow-rain mix where it can't accumulate. 
So I'm really reluctant to put big snow on the south side of Hampton Roads here. Newport News, Williamsburg, Smithfield, like I said earlier, sure, so at least a few inches of snow there. But not Hampton, not Norfolk, not Chesapeake, not Virginia Beach. Now, this is a high-resolution European. Again, this is the Cachet Ratio. And if you go back, we compare it to this here. That's the regular European. Okay. And take, keep that in mind. And now, uh, let's go to this. Very similar. Very similar. Again, notice the big snow gap in the Shenandoah Valley in southwest Virginia uh, by Roanoke. And then you can see a huge, look at the difference. 10 inches in Atlantic City, 2 inches in Philly. You know, 8 inches in D.C., 1.2 in Hagerstown. I mean, that's huge. And this is the uh, total snow depth on the ground by the end of the storm. Again, this is taking into account the wet ground, the warm temperatures, so on and so forth. And you can see there is a band of 16 snow in the... Um, in, in, in you know the Virginia Piedmont up towards St. Mary's and, and into into Dover and the Delmarva in southern New Jersey. I think that's correct. That could be right here. And that's why I had my forecast for the uh, first guess map has that band of four inches there plus in that area. So, of course, I made that map before the European came out, but that's another story. Anyway, um, this here is the European from early Monday morning, you can see the rain. There's the snow in Kentucky and southwest Virginia. And then this is 7 a.m. Monday. This is sleet snow mix right here in Chesterfield, Richmond. But again, if the sounding is correct, this is all snow. And this is actually all snow because the temperature is 33 degrees, but it's, the sounding supports all snow right down to the uh, lowest layer. So this is all snow here. And you can see heavy, heavy snow. Um, in central and Virginia, all the way back into uh, southwest Virginia. Asheville's getting crushed, Hickory, eastern Tennessee getting slammed. Um, so, and even moderate snow up to D.C., you can see that, and up towards Dover. And then here it is, a 1 o'clock. You can look up, and this, look at the heavy snow coming in from uh, Dover, and, excuse me, from Salisbury, right down on the ocean on the northeast wind. Look at these, the heavy snow band. So it's at Salisbury, Georgetown, Cambridge, Eastern, uh, the, uh, Northern Neck, Middle Peninsula, and then and into uh, a West Point and, and um, the, that area um, just to the you know just to the east of Richmond, and then into Newport News and Williamsburg. So they really could get slammed here uh, much more than let's say what Hampton Roads uh, South Side could get, and even the snow all the way down into Ohoski and Edenton and Elizabeth City because of the cold air coming down the northeast winds here on the European. So that's interesting. And now here is the uh, Europe. This is the British model from early on this Saturday morning. Uh, you could see that it's the lowest further off the coast, but if you look at the new run, it's much closer to the coast. And sure enough, it's got much more significant snowfall. This is much more snow than it had from early on Saturday morning. It's got seven inches. This is, uh, you know, uh, in Richmond, which seems reasonable. And it goes up towards uh, Middle Peninsula, southern, northern, southern Maryland into uh, the central Delmarva. Very reasonable snowfall forecast. This again, and notice again, maybe it's got too little snow in southwest Virginia and the Shenandoah Valley, but there is a gap here in the Virginia Piedmont, the southern Virginia Piedmont, right in here where there's not much going on. So that's something else to keep in mind. Anyway, that's the discussion. I may do another one Sunday night if I have the time. I don't know, um, but hopefully, you enjoyed this. And again, uh, if you need snow coverage and snow removal, we got more storms coming. There's potentially something on January 7th. There's another one on January 15th. The pattern has changed here. I know some were reluctant, but, you know, sign up. Give me a contact here. Contact me when you can through the, the Twitter page or through the email, and I'll set you up as, much, as fast as I can. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I'll see you over on the uh, Twitter page and on the blog, and hopefully one day soon when I get the Facebook problem fixed, I'll be back on Facebook.